Most people realize now that climate change is very real. So when it comes to heating their homes, they wonder what's the best environmental choice they can make for both air quality and global warming. Hi, I'm Christy, and I'm investigating the claim that choosing modern wood heating appliances and using them correctly can make a positive difference to our environment. Without a doubt, it's the most romantic and enjoyable way of heating your home. But what's the real effect on the environment? To help us take a look into this, I've invited heating expert David Wickham to join us. Welcome, David. Thanks, Christy. I'm glad to be here and be able to supply some facts. Yes. Everyone loves a wood fire heater and there's nothing quite like a beautiful one like this wood fire. But can you tell me, are they environmentally responsible? If you'd asked me 20 years ago, I would have said no. But a lot of research, uh, education into how to operate a wood heater has changed that. Uh, and today, they're most amongst the cleanest burning forms of heating in Australia. That response would surprise a lot of people. Do you have any facts to back it up? Yes, the CSIRO in 2003 and 2012 produced papers that tell us that wood heating produced less greenhouse gases than any other heating options. What about wood heater particulate emissions? The Australian standard has become progressively more strict. In 2019, it actually reduced the emission level to 1.5 grams per kilogram of fuel put in the heater with an allowable or an achieved efficiency of 60%. Now to achieve that, industry has done a lot of development work around secondary and tertiary air, uh, baffle plate designs. So the products produced today are very, very efficient. And of course, heaters today must comply with the new Australian standards. They're very low figures. Yes, the good news is that wood heating is a renewable resource and when the heater is burnt, it actually produces less carbon than what is produced if the actual tree fell over in the forest and decomposed naturally. Hmm. You mentioned good practices really make a difference. Yes, yeah, so two things. One is to build a fire correctly and the other one is to use uh, the right type of wood and the right moisture content. So any old wood won't do? <laughs> Definitely not. There is wood that's meant to be burned in a wood heater and that is wood that is seasoned and dried. If it's not seasoned and dried, it's green and wet and there are serious consequences. Well, thanks, David. Sounds like we need to speak to a wood expert. I'm now with Bruce Mogg, who's former CEO and current board member of the Australian Home Heating Association. Welcome, Bruce. Tell me, how long have you been in the Home Heating Association for? I've been in the Home Heating Association and involved in the industry for over 30 years. Great. And I heard that you shouldn't burn uh, wood that hasn't been aged. Can you tell us why that's so important? Yeah, that's correct. You shouldn't cut wood off the tree and burn it straight away. It's very important because otherwise you're just burning green or wet wood. Why are green and wet wood so bad? Oh, look, they're really bad for a few reasons. Firstly, when you buy firewood, you buy it by weight. So if the wood is uh, green or wet, it's going to be heavier. So you're paying for wood that you're really not going to get the best value out of. Secondly, when you burn that wood in your fire, the fire has to dry the wood before it starts to produce heat that will come into your home. And then finally, it can produce harmful byproducts like creosote that can build up inside your fire and inside your flue and cause a flue fire, which can be very dangerous. What's best practice when getting your wood? The best way to get your firewood is to buy from a Home Heating Association member if you can. Um, they will normally have it cut and split for you, ready to go, and that will guarantee the right moisture content, which means that when you get it home, it'll burn efficiently and give you the heat that you want in your home. Bruce, I'm told these can be helpful in checking the moisture in your wood. Can you show me how to use a moisture meter? Yeah, absolutely. Moisture meters are great because they give you a digital readout of the moisture content of the wood. Easy process, they've got two prongs on the end. You put them into the wood, push the button, and that will give you a reading. Your reading should be between 15 and 20%. Ideally around the 16% is great, but anywhere in that 5% range. Thanks Bruce, and thanks for your advice. My pleasure. So let me see if I understand this correctly. Getting properly sourced wood has heaps of benefits. Initially, that's because the majority of wood comes from proper forestry projects a controlled renewable resource. The wood's brought into the yard as long logs. They're then cut and split and placed in windrows for at least two years to reduce moisture content. They turn the wood over while it sits in the windrows three times over two years 
to make sure it dries properly. Green wood is very obvious by colour, as is the seasoned wood, which is the wood we want. At the bulk yard, they check it has the ideal moisture content of 15 to 20%. Then it's sent to the retail yard, where they check it again before they sell it. And finally, any waste materials from firewood residue is used for landscaping and soil regeneration projects. It's an impressive renewable resource. But don't get it yet, it's not just the firewood, you've also got to understand how to correctly build the fire. Well, that's exactly where we're up to now, to use some of your beautiful wood to create the perfect fire. Okay, you'll also need some pine kindling. Pine kindling is important to get your fire started, as well as some good quality fire lighters. Thank you. Pleasure. We're here in the parking lot and I'm joined by Ashley Stride, who's the Deputy Chair of the Home Heating Association. Thanks for helping us out, Ashley. It's a pleasure. Now we've spoken to one expert about wood and moisture and another expert about emissions, and they've both said that it's vital to know how to build a fire correctly. You're absolutely right there. A lot of people think you can just throw the wood in there and start a fire. That's not true. It's important that you set up the fireplace correctly and it's easy to do. You'll have to convince me of the benefits of that, Ash. Yes, yeah, it's, it's easy to do. It's easy to start the fire, more beneficial to the environment, but you need to be using a modern wood heater. Well, we've got two heaters here. We've got this beautiful modern piece and a bit of an older one. So I guess we have to start two fires and see how it goes. Yeah, there's eight simple steps to be able to do that. So we can start off now if you like. Great, let's do it. So the first step that we need to do is to open up the air control on the unit. So that can be a slide or it can also be a valve that you open and shut. The second step is that we're going to use fire lighters in the base of the fireplace, 15 centimetres apart. I'm not going to use newspaper in there because the print that's on there will actually cause more smoke and is a hindrance to the environment. Doesn't kerosene or lighter fluids speed things up? Absolutely not. It's actually more dangerous and also too, it's going to create more pollution. Third, put softwood kindling in a crisscross pattern. Softwood burns faster, so it's the go. Another common mistake is putting your kindling in a haphazard way or using odd twigs or building offcuts. Only use proper softwood kindling. The crisscross pattern seems like a lot of effort. Is it worth it? It's very simple and not hard at all. And it lets the air through the wood, so burning is ideal. Just chucking them in together, they clump and don't burn well. Now we light it with fire starters. If you wouldn't mind, Christy. No worries. And always use a fireproof safety glove. In both fires, you can leave the door slightly ajar to stimulate airflow, but only if you remain present during the whole time. The fifth step is that we wait five to 10 minutes. And now we add small bits of hardwood, again, in a crisscross pattern. These pieces should go no wider than a can of drink. Can we shut the door latch yet? Sure, Christy, that's step number six. You latch the door fully shut and wait 30 minutes for the firebox to get really hot. But if you have an electric fan built in, don't turn it on yet. Wait 30 minutes. Okay, Ash, we've waited 30 minutes. Great, now it's time for the seventh step, which is to add the hardwood. Each piece should be about the size of a loaf of bread and the right moisture content. Use fire safe gloves. Again, we use a crisscross pattern. The modern heater fire is burning beautifully over here. Absolutely, it's because we set that up right and it is a modern heater. Now the last step, number eight, is to adjust the airflow to your liking and to turn on your inbuilt fan if the heater has one. I have to admit, that's a perfect fire in number one, Ashley. Extremely warm too. But over in the old heater, there's a great deal of smoke coming out. It's a huge difference. Okay, I've got something very interesting to show you. Because we've been filming each of these fires over the entire time we've built them, we can now speed it up and see the dramatic difference between a properly built fire in a modern heater and in an old heater. So let's see these fires side by side and their different outcomes. It's amazing what a difference a modern heater with new technology makes. And you can see by the flu on the new one, it's burning very cleanly. And so it are easily complying to Australian standards for emissions. Mm, that's an important reason, but is it the only one? Not at all, Christy. A fire that's built properly and established and ready to run will get hot quicker, will be easier to operate. And that's all comes down to the technology behind a modern burning wood fireplace and good quality wood. The fire in the old heater has a nasty dark smoke coming out of the flue. Yeah, that's far too much smoke and creosote. It means that you're gonna spend more money and time to be able to have that cleaned out when it could have been avoided in the first place with a modern fireplace that's regularly serviced. 
Well, that brings up the all important issue of servicing and maintaining your heater. Thanks so much, Ashley. You've convinced me it's not too hard to build a proper fire. Thanks, Christy. It's been a pleasure. By now, you've probably realized that modern Australian wood heaters are sophisticated and quite high-tech pieces of equipment. So if you want to get the most out of your heater and also keep it safe, it's important to have it cleaned and maintained every year. Servicing can usually be done at your home by the technician. The first part that's cleaned is the flue. And we talked earlier about creosote or tar building up from green, wet or unseasoned wood, but it's also a natural byproduct of dry wood in much smaller amounts. The problem with creosote is that it can cause a very dangerous flu fire. It also reduces the efficiency of your heater because the tar blockage decreases the airflow. The flute needs to be checked for any other blockages that occur like bird's nests. And the section right at the top called the exit cowl needs to be free and clear of everything around it for three meters. So overhanging branches need to be kept clear and every year it's important to check that the flu hasn't been affected by wind or storms or anything else, again, for your safety. Next, the technician checks inside the unit itself. They check for any splits or cracks in or on the firebox and make sure the internal lining made up of fire bricks is also okay. Then there's this device here, a baffle plate which has to be in good condition and in the correct position according to your brand and spec for your heater. This makes a real difference to safety and efficiency. A cracked baffle plate can cause inefficient burning and has the potential to cause a flue fire. Now let's look at the door. There are three things to check. The door seal, the glass seal and the latch. It's worth having an expert technician look at these, test them and decide if they need replacement. Then there's the glass. It may seem really obvious, but if there are any cracks or holes in the door glass, get it fixed. It ruins efficiency, but it's also extremely dangerous. There are some people who think she'll be right. I can tell you it won't be right and it has to be fixed. Last of all is the electric fan. If your unit has one like this, vacuum it regularly. All sorts of muck gets in there like pet hair, dust and insects. So clean it regularly for maximum efficiency. If you have any questions about who should service your wood fire heater, it's simple. Contact the Australian Home Heating Association in your state. They'll put you in touch with your nearest members who have qualified technicians to service your unit. The Home Heating Association are the peak body for wood heaters and they've been improving the standards on emissions and efficiency over the last decade. With me is the chair of the Home Heating Association. Welcome back, David. First of all, David, what's the purpose of the Home Heating Association and how can you help homeowners, local council and retailers at the same time? We help everyone in the wood heating industry, firstly or mostly to ensure that there's compliance with the Australian standards around safety, emissions uh, and efficiencies. So councils, customers and retailers all need our expertise. What about your relationship with member retailers? We support all our member retailers. Of course, they must conform to our code of ethics, which means any customer that goes into one of those stores owned a member is dealing with someone who is ethically doing the right thing, understands the products, uh, which ensures, of course, that the customer is getting very sound advice. David, I see Landcare is involved with the Home Heating Association. How does the Home Heating Association fit in with that? Landcare Australia is made up of farmers, environmentalists who get together to ensure our environment is protected. We're very proud supporters and, of Landcare Australia and we have been for the last 30 years. So what that means from a consumer's point of view is that every heater they purchase from one of our members is supporting Landcare. Does the Home Heating Association support positive environmental change? Absolutely. We support people that to buy renewable fuel to use in their heater, which of course supports the environment, but by also by buying products from our members. They're ensuring they're buying products that meet the emission standards, um, burn efficiently, and ultimately that means that they're protecting our environment. Well, that's fine for all the heaters made after 2019, but what about all the old ones out there? Well, we encourage everyone to upgrade their heaters as soon as they possibly can because they're helping emissions, air quality, uh, 
and that's good for everyone. Thank you, Mr. David Wickham. And for more information, contact the Home Heating Association. Before we finish, let me remind you of the important points. Modern wood heating technology has dramatically improved in emissions and efficiency. Modern wood heaters, which are bought from Home Heating Association members, are among the cleanest heating options available. But the fires must also be built properly. That means buying the correct wood from a Home Heating Association member who supports renewable resources. The wood must not be green or wet. Fires must be built using only fire starters, kindling and correctly sized hardwood. The correct crisscross patterns and eight step processes create clean, safe fires that have maximum efficiency. Regular servicing of your wood heater, at least annually, is vital to safety and efficiency. Contact your local Home Heating Association member to find a qualified technician. In fact, we can help you with any questions you have about home heating and put you in touch with your nearest Home Heating Association member. So if you want the most beautiful wood heating experience in your home that's clean burning, efficient and environmentally responsible, talk to us today.